Everybody, this is Greg Tanner for the Mindful Eye and the photo of the week on the Daily Critique. This week's photo of the week was created by Venith, who is a beginning photographer from California. Metadata, Nikon camera body, effective focal length of about 16 millimeters, exposure trio, ISO 200, F11, and 1.6 seconds. And the backstory here, Venith says that this is a boat that has been on the beach near Los Angeles, California for a very long time. And the story is people fell asleep on this boat and the boat crashed. Then it says that with camera position, the idea is to emphasize um, the texture, surface quality of the decking here and the beach itself, and to get really close and indulge the viewer in questions like, how did the boat get here and how long has it been here? One of the first things that I wanted to talk about that could be a powerful takeaway in this video is getting closer. Bennett has done a fantastic job here of getting very close to the main subject of the image. And to me, it's really helping Bennett to hit all of the marks that were talked about in the backstory in terms of goals for the shot. This is particularly important when we start to put on very wide angle lenses. Here, effective focal length is about 16 millimeters. This is definitely super wide. thing that can happen to us with these kind of super wides, if we don't get close to something in the composition, some part of our main subject or some foreground something in the overall shot, things uh, end up being five feet or more away uh, shooting this wide. Um, the shot can just appear to start way out there. It can create a real strong feeling of disconnect in terms of the viewer being able to move into the shot. Getting closer is powerful so much of the time, no matter what our subject matter, no matter what lens we're shooting, but it can be particularly important at the super wide end of things. Another thing that I wanted to mention that I really like about the shot that could help you with your landscape photography is just cutting down on the negative space of the sky in these kinds of compositions, particularly when you have a sky that doesn't have a lot of cloud action above the horizon. It's going to do so many things for you. You know, unless you're trying to make a statement about negative space and you have a composition that looks like this, a bunch of blank sky, just a little bit of some things at the bottom. And what can happen is, number one, it can just be boring to have a big negative space shape without anything in it. Negative space can be boring, very flat, or it can be very elegant, like this negative space shape, because uh, the contouring line of it, uh, the bottom of it, and how narrow it is. Um, another thing that can be very powerful about framing like this is it can just make your image more dynamic from a weight standpoint. The top of your image is already heavy because of gravity and it can be really powerful to have a very small subject balance a lot of other things because of the conceptual heaviness of that subject. That is a very powerful way to use the design principle of proportion in a dynamic way. A little bit of something in a composition that is very visually heavy that balances a lot of everything else. It's another powerful thing that can happen when you frame the sky like this. The sky is not only at the top. What else is true about the sky so much of the time? Well, the difference between whatever is the last subject before the sky, in this case, a little bit of water, a little bit of cloud, but mainly the dark edge of this boat and the sky itself because so much of the time, unless we're shooting at night, it's very bright. You also have a lot of contrast up here. And I just love the way that Bennett has managed the sky. It's really important here too because the idea is to keep us down in here and to quote Bennett, to indulge us in the lower part of the shot. Not only is the real tight framing on the sky helping to do that, but the tight framing on the right hand side we end up with a pretty big negative space shape of the beach. But by bringing the camera to a point where the top end of the boat comes over and almost kisses the edge of the frame, we end up with a pretty dramatic triangle of negative space. And by cutting this off and not leaving a bunch of negative space around the main subject, again, it's almost as easy for us to go here or to go here as it is for us to get past this and go up into this part of the shot. So really nice in terms of the way this image has been framed on the right hand side. It's a very powerful image at the level of color. Let's talk about some color things that could help you. Continuing to remember that color is in front of everything else, even the idea of the boat. In other words, we'll perceive orange before we will perceive that this overall image within the big image of the shot is a boat. In addition to that, we need to always remember that color contrast always involves conceptual contrast. We don't just have the difference between warm and cool in the shot. 
we have the difference in totally different emotional feelings uh, when it comes to this color versus this color. That means that whenever we have color contrast, it's a double whammy because we have the hues that are contrasting that create this feeling of physicality, warm moving towards us, cool going away. But then we also have the emotional baggage of whatever cool and warm color that it is. So we have conceptual contrast. In the same way that Veneth has used a little bit of sky here to uh, do a very powerful job of balancing a lot of the other image, this little triangle of water is an amazing example of using proportion in an outrageously dynamic way. So many different ways that we can talk about this little spot in the image having an incredible amount of weight. Uh, we could look at the shape and this idea of sort of half of a spear or, or an obtuse triangle. Very, very high energy. We have a color that's calming and soothing, but in the context of all of this orange and yellow and red, to only have one place in the image that has this concentrated blue-green, tertiary, very powerful color idea, even though this is not as high value of a color idea as the orange, in this case because it's different than all the other orange, it takes on an incredible amount of weight. And then the other thing that's very powerful is just the story that's being told. You have the water that has pushed the boat uh, on to the beach. And so we don't need a whole lot of the water um, in this composition just because of the story that's being told for it to take on a lot of weight just relative to its place in the story of the shot. Something else that I want to mention here that's brilliant in this composition. The boat has been presented to us and it takes up most of the space of the shot. This real tight framing, what it does is it just suggests sky, water, and hills near the beach. All those things are the most ordinary concepts. This is the unique thing. Very few people that are looking at this shot, unless you live near here, have ever seen this particular boat on this particular beach. But everybody that is looking at the shot more than likely has seen an ocean, has seen sky, and has seen the kind of coastal environment where there are hills that are near the water. Your brain fills in the rest of the story here, obviously here and here. So we don't need much of these ideas for our brain to imagine a lot more of the environment. But so many photographers make the mistake of showing a lot of complementary subjects, not the main subjects, but the things around their main subjects. They show way too much of that stuff when the viewer can fill in the blanks. So much of the time the background is archetypal. So much of the background um, in, in many, many shots, it is more generic. And I love the way Veneth has cut down on that here. Uh, one last thing that I wanted to say here is that a powerful way to consider the impact that images may be having on you that is subconscious is to abstract the images. And the truth is that's a very powerful way to become more creative. When you're presented with information or a challenge to set yourself up so that you can see what you may judge to be ordinary in an abstract way. One of the things that I do when I'm editing my own work and when I'm working on images for the daily critique is take the images and make them very, very small on my screen and then make them very big and that helps to abstract. If it's really big, I can only see part of the overall shot. If it's really small, I just start to get a sense of the intrinsic ideas like shapes and qualities of line. And one of the things that happens to you if you make this image very small is you start to see the archetype of a wing or a body that could have wings or a very long body with two eyes. And the fact that these eyes are very dark and the color here, this idea of red and orange, excuse me, black and orange or black and red in nature is a warning. So there's something that's very powerful that has a lower level energy, almost a, of an insect, not a bird. If you look at this very small, that is having an effect on the viewer. And uh, you might say, well, so what? What does it mean? It means that you should be spending time, if you want to get serious about your artwork and you want to get serious about being creative, you should practice ways to abstract the things that you're seeing as a photographer, to take the create, creative opportunities, the creative challenges, and abstract these things. Because look, here's what society has conditioned all of us to do, to just make the snap judgments and then that's it. And so you don't really let life in at all. You don't make any attempt to look at things in a way that uh, involves wonder and questioning because, oh, we know everything. And I see this all the time in my teaching. I give somebody a new lens to try, like the lens baby. They take four pictures and go, I don't want this. Here, have it back. Put it back in your backpack. Well, why not? Well, this just is difficult. It's not working. It's like, really? 
Is that all that you're going to do in terms of experimentation? It requires work for us to get to a new place. There will be a period of anxiety. It requires work to abstract things. It requires effort to look at something and go, well, I'm seeing tree, but what are all the other ways that I can see this where I just start to see it as, let's say, a collection of shapes or qualities of line? I really want to encourage you to do that as a photographic artist. It's going to help you. It's going to make you more creative. It's going to mean that you're the person that spends more time, that you make an effort to see more, to let more life get in, to be uh, more present in your creative process. Fantastic image that's about story, it's about color, it's about so many different things. Just love uh, this image. I want to say a big thank you to Veneth uh, for sharing it with us. I hope I get the name right. Um, and I want to say a huge thank you to you for being here. I hope to see you again very soon on the Mindful Eye.